Shields up, Ironbreakers. How's everybody doing today? Hope they're all doing good. Hopefully you can improve on that with some more Dragon's Dogma 2 adventures. But before we get to that, there's clearly some stuff that we got to talk about. I've been messaged multiple times. A lot of people have been leaving me a bunch of comments in my YouTube content. So... Obviously, we're going to have to talk about the whole microtransaction situation in Dragon's Dogma 2, as well as a couple of more things that were pointed out to me that I thought were uh, interesting. So I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts about this whole situation. So first and foremost, I've had a bunch of people tell me that I've been hiding the performance situation of this game. This is just something that I want to bring up before we even get to the microtransactions. People just straight up calling me uh, like a liar and saying, Oh, you've been hiding this from us, blah, blah, blah. And let's make one thing perfectly clear. I've revealed what the frame rate the game was running at on PlayStation 5 the moment the embargo lifted. As well as the resolution at which I played the game. Does anybody have any questions about this? I'm just pointing it out. Like, literally, embargo lifted. I was like, okay, guys, here's the frame rate. Right from the get-go. Here's what I experienced. And how much does it bother me? Right from the friggin' get-go. Okay? So let's make this perfectly clear. Then people saying, you glanced over it in your review. Excuse me, motherfucker. I glanced over it. There's a decent chunk of my... It's not really a review because I didn't finish the game when I wrote that. It was just what I had played of the game up until that point. There's a decent chunk of that where I go over like, okay, listen, my CPU is, is good. My RAM is good. My drives are good. This is the GPU that I'm using. This is the performance that I'm getting. This is what I've done. This is how I feel about... I spent a decent chunk of time talking about the performance stuff in this game and in the final thoughts portion, I even said, if you are somebody who is particularly sensitive about performance, you should maybe hold off until they patch the game. So this is just to talk about all of these performance accusations that people are pulling out of their ass for some strange reason, like I've been completely ignoring that the game has performance issues. No, I haven't. This is a blatant lie. So it's putting that out there. Now, let's go on to the microtransactions. People are saying, you hit this, you shill. You did these terrible things. You didn't tell us that these microtransactions were in the game. Guess what? I didn't know. And I highly doubt anybody else did. You think I wouldn't bring this up in my videos had I known? I did not know. I was not aware that the game was going to receive these microtransactions. Otherwise, I would have talked about them. I still don't understand why people think that I will not speak my mind. I always speak my mind on things. I'm the guy that talked about the, um, what were they called? The Lost Code weapons in Monsanto Rise Sunbreak. Didn't I make like a whole video dedicated about that? It's specifically explaining why I didn't agree with it. And so many people gave me crap over it. And me, I'm the guy who's going to defend microtransactions and hide them and shy away from talking about them. I swear to God that like so many people just jump into my comment sections randomly, have no idea what I do or what my stance is on anything. If you think that I wouldn't speak about microtransactions, this is completely, absolutely ridiculous. Okay. You can find God knows how many videos of me talking about microtransactions in my channel. I will never shy away from that topic. I will tackle it head on as I've always done. But anyway, regardless of all that, First and foremost, are people right about being upset about microtransactions? Yes. Of course they are. 
because none of us were expecting it. Of course, you should be upset about the microtransactions because it's not okay. Now, let me tell you guys why I don't think it's okay. The fact that we have to have this conversation is ridiculous and shows the state of our society. Uh, Rurikon's not to blame. It's like, guys, listen. I, I'm, I don't need you guys to tell me that I'm not to blame. I know exactly where I stand. I'm just making my statement so that people understand exactly where I'm coming from. Anyway, I said at the beginning, at the end of last year, that I'm done kind of fighting this fight because I've seen that so many video games are going to be doing this, that if I basically take a principled stance, I'm not going to be able to play most of the games that I want to play. So it is what it is. But that's not going to stop me from voicing my opinion. So let's talk about it. So here's the microtransactions, all of the microtransactions that were posted for the game. Number one, which is going to be in everybody's mind, Rurikon, are these microtransactions pay to win? Yes. Yeah. Like, wh why shy away from it? Yeah, they are. Just like I also said the same thing about the microtransactions in Helldivers 2, they're also pay to win. It's just a matter of, are they pay to win enough to a point where it bothers me? And in this case, it bothers me, but it's not enough where in like, oh my God, you can get such a massive advantage. And we're going to be going over every single one of the items. Now, to me, the moment that a microtransaction can have any type of in-game effect uh, that gives you any kind of an advantage, to me, I consider that pay to win. And as you guys can see, we have wake stones in here. For those of you that don't know what wake stones are... Wake stones is something that when you die, you can use a wake stone and it resurrects your character. So that's clearly an in-game advantage. It's basically like giving you a whole new health pool. For, not for free, for 99 cents or whatever, right? So that to me is where I draw the line with pay to win. Either something is pay to win or it has absolutely no gameplay effect. That's, that's how I look at things, which is why with the Helldivers 2 situation, it's like, hey, you can buy armor. Armor has in-game stats. It's not just cosmetic. Therefore, also pay to win. It, to me, it's that simple. Like a lot of people, they like to move the goalposts and blah, blah, blah. Oh, but this is not pay to win because of this. And this is not pay to win because of that. It's like, no, no, no. no there's no moving of the goalposts. If it has an in-game effect, if it can give you any kind of advantage, it's pay to win. So, yes, it is. Now, is it necessary? And more importantly, is the game balanced around it? No. So in a lot of ways, I would actually say that these microtransactions that you have right here are a crutch. They're a crutch for losers that don't know how to play the game. People who get skill checked by the game, they can come in here and they can buy some of these crutches to help them out in their experience. If that's something that you want to do, you do whatever you want. Now, me, I have no intention on buying any of these. You guys are free to do however you want. Now... Let's talk more about this. One of the things is, I don't actually know how microtransactions work on Steam because I don't usually buy any of this crap, okay? And this, this at this point is actually a problem because I don't actually know how things work. But looking at this, we have one, two, three, four, five wake stones. This is the same item and it is labeled A, B, C, D, E. What this tells me is you can only buy five wake stones. So you can't like infinitely keep buying them because if that was the case, it would make no sense that they were labeled A, B, C, D, E. So I'm going to assume that everything that is in here are one-time purchases. So this reduces things a little bit. It's still not good, but it does reduce them a little bit because it limits how many things you can actually get. So you can buy yourself five resurrections, which like I said, you know, if you don't know how to play the game, if you're getting skill checked, sure, go ahead. Buy five resurrections, whatever. I wish you didn't because that would obviously send a message that, hey, we don't actually want any of this stuff, but, you know, whatever. Explorer's Camping Kit. <clears throat> so you can buy camping kits in-game. I don't think this is a big deal. The thing is, it says here, efficient without being unduly weighty. I wish I knew what the weight is on the Explorer's Camping Kit because I don't actually know, and I don't think they clarify here how much it weighs. They don't say how much it weighs. They just say that it's light. Because weight is something that you need to consider at the beginning of the game. It is actually the reason why both me and my pawn started as fighters so that we can get a vocation 
augment that uh, gives us additional weight uh, so that we can carry more things. So this is one of the things that I wish I knew exact. 5.5 kilos? Okay, so people in chat are telling me this is 5.5 kilos. Okay, I already bought something in the game that's 6 kilos. It cost me 3,000 gold. So, 5.5 kilos, who cares? This is more of a cosmetic than anything else. Now, Dragon's Dogma Music and Sound Collection, this has no in-game benefits. I'm not against this one. This particular microtransaction, I think it's fine. You can get music from the original Dragon's Dogma. However, it better include Dangan into free. I doubt it will because I don't have the license for it anymore. But that would be really cool. So this one I don't care about. Harpy Snare Smoke Beacons. Again, such a stupid thing. You can craft this in game. You can craft this in game. You can find this in game. You can buy this in game. You don't need this for anything. Heartfelt Pendant. This is, again, a skill item in case, uh, oh, I don't know how to manage relationships in the game. At least that's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming this is like something that you give to a character that you like, and it will increase the, the thing, right? Let me see what the description is. Obtain a pendant overflowing with tender affection. When offered as a gift, deepens the bond between giver and receiver. Yep, like I said, this is something for you to improve relationships in the game. Again, like I said at the start of this, it is a crutch. It's very much a crutch if you don't know how to play the game, if you're getting skill checked on how to manage relationships, a crutch. Ambivalent Rift Incense. Change Pawn Inclinations. This one's actually really funny for me. So this costs one euro and 99 cents. And this basically changes the inclination of your pawn to a random one. So number one, it is a terrible item to begin with, okay? This is a terrible item. I would definitely not recommend anybody to get the ambivalent rift incense. But on top of it, on top of it, we actually have the game open right here. You can just come over here and homeboy on, have a look. sells you nine of them for 500 rift crystals. So that's another pretty worthless item. Like I said, this is not good value even. So you can just go in there. You can buy it for 500 Rift Crystals. Rift Crystals are not too hard to get. Currently, I have 570 from eight hours of gameplay. But it was mostly eight hours where I was just like farting around. I didn't even do that much. If you're actually min-maxing and playing efficiently, you'll get a lot more. So pfft, whatever. Makeshift Jail Key. You can buy this. I've actually seen this for sale in the game. I, don't, I think it costs like 3,000 gold or 6,000 gold. Something like that. In case you guys are wondering, oh, but how hard is it to get gold? Uh, right now, Many thanks. after about 8 hours of gameplay, I have 15,000. But the only reason I have 15,000 gold is because at the end of the last session, we spent like 50,000 gold or something like that buying new gear for my pawn so technically speaking i had closer to seventy thousand gold uh so yeah buying a makeshift jail key is super easy on top of it i'm not justifying anything vita rock sit down i'm not justifying anything i already said this shouldn't be in the game i'm explaining what each of these items does so that people understand how this affects them in the game. I already said at the start, I don't agree with these microtransactions. I don't think these microtransactions will be in the game. I'm not justifying this. I am telling you why you shouldn't buy it. Understand. So sit down. Now, as I was saying, on top of it, you probably don't even need the jail key to escape from jail. I've already been to the jail uh, in my previous save file. And there's like a wall that you can just break and you can leave. You can just break a wall and leave. At least that was my understanding from it. But usually there are other ways of escaping jail without a key. There's plenty of ways of escaping jail without a key. You can also pay your way out of jail. You can bribe, <clears throat> you can bribe the guards. So this is another item that you definitely shouldn't get. It's a waste of money. Art of Metamorphosis, Character Editor. So this one is important because a lot of people, at least I think... A lot of people believe that this item lets you have a new save slot, which is weird because let me tell you, there's no way to get a new save slot. You can't buy a new save slot. 
So I don't know why people are thinking that you can get a new safe slot. I don't, I, I don't know if it's this item. But also, if this is the item you're concerned about, again, this is the first city that... This is the first main city that you come to. And over here, as you can see, once again, Art of Metamorphosis, same thing as the Ambivalent Rift Incense. Costs 500 Rift Crystals, and dude sells two of them, and we already have 500 Rift Crystals. That's another waste of your money. You shouldn't, you shouldn't buy that, and it's right there. And this also doesn't give you a new save slot. If anybody can tell me why people think that they can buy a new save slot that's actually something that i'm interested in understanding because that would be something to that would be something for me to talk about that would be something that would be important but as far as i'm aware no you can't buy a new save slot as a matter of fact what i had to do is i had to delete my save file in order to be able to start a, a fresh playthrough I had to go through like the Steam folders. And by the way, let me tell you something. Can we get some some fucking standardization on Steam, bro? Like, no joke. I, I usually don't have to mess around with my save files in most games because I just I don't I don't go and edit save files or make backups or whatever. It's like the save file goes wherever it goes, and I don't really care most of the time. But this one time that I had to go and delete a save file, good lord, it was a miserable experience. I had to like sort files through the date that they had been added inside a bunch of different Steam folders before I came across my Dragon's Dogma 2 save file. Okay. We could use some standardizer. Like, listen, you guys ever you guys ever deleted a save file on a PlayStation? So much you just go to the settings, save games. It's right there for all the games. We should really have a standardization when it comes to this. But anyway, that's besides the point. As far as I'm aware, you cannot get a new save file. And the character editor, I already show which you can get it. I would not recommend. Now, this one right here is one of the biggest offenders. This is one of the biggest offenders because it straight up goes against what the game director said. So in a lot of ways, I actually think that whoever was responsible in the monetization department for, uh, for the microtransactions and stuff... Uh, probably didn't even consult with the game director because the philosophy of the game is go wherever you want but traveling is an essential part of the game you have to travel you have to actually do the journey and that's what makes the game special so allowing you to buy a port crystal fundamentally flies in the face of that now again i'm assuming because of the other items that you can only buy one of these so you can only buy one port crystal you don't need to buy a port crystal. I've seen people tout this as as like, oh, they're selling you uh, fast travel. This is not fast travel. This is you setting a location that you can teleport to. You still have to buy the fairy stones. Fairy stones cost 10,000 gold in a game to teleport. You don't just get a port crystal and then teleport yourself. The port crystal is the waypoint. You can place port crystals anywhere that you want in the world, and then you can teleport to them, but you still need the fairy stones to travel to the port crystal. So this is not free fast travel. This is something that you buy, you place in the world, and then you teleport to it, and this just lets you buy one additional one. According to Cowboy, you get like five or six of them per cycle, because the game then has New Game Plus and stuff. So you're going to get like five or six of them throughout the game, and again, I really don't like this item. This item actually bothers me more than pretty much anything else that is on here. Uh, and yeah, I think this is just bad, and it goes against the philosophy of the game, so they shouldn't have done this one, 100%. But, you know, it is what it is. As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't have done any of them to begin with, but whatever. Finally, we have Wake Stones. Again, I already explained what these are. Resurrections. I have a bunch of them already. Like, let me actually see how many I have. Pleasure doing business. Let me just see how many I have. I usually keep them in my storage because I don't want to waste them. But we can check really quick how many Wake Stones we have in eight hours of well, gameplay. You will soon forget the fatigue of a long journey. Uh, when withdraw. Where's my Wake Stones? We have three Wake Stones. I already have three of them. I only played for like eight hours. And I'm already on my way to my number fourth. You don't need to buy those. It's a waste of money. It's, it's a ter it's, again, it's terrible value. It's just bad value. And it's a bad idea to do. It's just a bad idea. So, 
I wouldn't get that. And then finally, Rift Crystals. This is another one that I think is really dumb. This is something that they did back in the original Dragon's Dogma. They also sold Rift Crystals in the original Dragon's Dogma. So you get Rift Crystals by uh, sending out your, your pawn. So whenever people hire your pawn, you get Rift Crystals because somebody hired your pawn. Uh, whenever you are just playing the game, killing monsters, looting stuff, you can get Rift Crystals. This is just one of the currencies of the game. And I think it's a terrible idea to sell. It's just bad. It's just, it's just bad. But on top of it, this isn't even good value. Like, to give you guys an idea on the original Dragon's Dogma, and I was I was a much smaller content creator back then, but a lot of people took my pawn because I made a really good pawn. So a lot of people would take my pawn. I had millions of Rift Crystals by the time I was close to Endgame. So you shouldn't get this. But anyway, fundamentally, I just wanted to explain what each of the items is because there's a lot of misconceptions out there of people saying, oh, they're selling fast travel. They're selling save slots. No. They're not. Doesn't make it any better. Still bad. Not to mention that it's a needless L for Capcom to even have those things in the game. The I don't understand why you would do that. You know uh, give me just a second. Let me pause the game here. I don't understand why you would do that. I think it's fundamentally a bad idea to engage in these types of... Because it, it's, it's just... It, you don't need it. You don't need it. It's not even something that gives players good value. And on top of it, the PR hit that you're going to take from this with so many people already just like slamming the game down, you know, and it's their prerogative. It, it's just needless. You didn't need to do any of this. It was a waste of time. And, you know, everybody's mad at you now. And the thing to me is a lot of people are boycotting the game. And it's like, hey, look, it is what it is. You don't like the microtransactions, boycott the game. You got to do what you got to do. I just think it really sucks. For the people that actually developed this game, uh, Itsuno's team and whatnot, because they've developed something that I think is really special. They developed something that is a unique open world experience. It's a ton of fun. I love playing it. I'm going to keep playing it. And it sucks because some guy in a suit decided like, hey, let's put all these micro designs. It's going to be great. And it's like, no, no, you, you fucked it up. Good job. But the rest of the people on the team, it's not their fault. You know, that's the part that really fucking sucks. The microtransactions are relevant if you can earn everything in game, so I don't know why people are crying. Because it shouldn't be there to begin with. I completely understand that point. That's the thing. 